Okay, Jing uh, live Jakha. Uh, uh, Jing start here, Lanang Nia Kade. Um, uh, Jutai, uh, to all Rajirao, I'm Rakhi, and on behalf of the Master Scholars League, would like to welcome everyone uh, present with us today on this uh, special talk on the life and legacy of Veer Senya Shambhudan Pongro. Uh, the uh, the one thirty eighth death anniversary of Sambudan Ponglo was on the twelfth. That is uh, two days ago, and uh, we have seen several uh, Dimasa uh, civil society organizations and educational institutions and the state authorities commemorated this event uh, to honor the memory of uh, freedom fighter Sambudan Ponglo. We at uh, Dimasa Scholars League felt that a discussion on the life and the times and legacy of Ponglo was greatly necessary to know and honor the memory of this Dimasa national hero. And hence we are here today uh, and, we've conduct, uh, and we plan to conduct this talk today from our platform. Uh, we are extremely happy to have two esteemed speakers with us this evening, Dr. Suranjana Hasnu and Dr. Santosh Hasnu. Uh, they'll be sharing with us insights into the personality that uh, Sambudan Ponglo was and the events during his times and of his life which has shaped not just the Masa history but also of the larger Indian nation state. Uh, the speakers will be speaking for uh, anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes each and after that if time permits we can take uh, comments and questions from the audience and we'll be very delighted if the audience perhaps can also briefly share with us in their comments uh, what Sambudan Ponglo represents or means to them. I think that would be really great on this event. Uh, so with that, I would like to introduce our first speaker. Uh, she's uh, Dr. Suranjana Hasnu. She's currently assistant professor at the Department of History, Difu Government College, Assam University. Uh, Dr. Hasnu has completed her MA, MPhil, and PhD from Assam uh, University. Her interest areas are modern history, especially cultural, social, and economic history. And she'll be speaking on the life and times of Samudan Ponglo for 30 minutes. Uh, with that, I hand over the mic to Dr. Suranjana Hasnu. Thank you, Rakhi. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes, yes you are yes. audible. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, good evening to you all, and I will. Uh, I welcome all the uh, all in the today's webinar, life and legacy uh, on Samudran Pongla. It is on the occasion of the 138th death anniversary of the Samudran Pongla, as Rashi has mentioned well. I also welcome my co-speaker, Dr. Santush Hasnu, Assistant Professor, Department of History, Hansdorff College, University of Delhi. And I also offer my sincere gratitude to all my members of the Dimasa Scholar League, and especially Sister Taki Naidin, for giving me the opportunity to speak in this platform. The topic itself is a very interesting as well as important for the history of Dimasa people and for the Dimasa contribution in the national history. Interesting in a sense that uh, uh, how a small boy of the 16 years, that is B. Samudhan Tonglo, become so, uh, have the acquired the leadership quality uh, uh, to uh, suit against the British East India Company's authority. And important on the sense that it also helps us to decode the Dimasa history in the nation wide. About Samudan Thonglo, uh, uh, he came especially in the limelight of the, the stages of the history, especially in the Northeastern histories. Uh, from the orality of the Dimasa, the oral history of the Dimasa is very strong in this region among the Dimasa. And uh, few works, research work done by the Assam Sahitya Sabha and scholar like B.N. Bordeloy and F.K. Bob Zari, as, and besides few regional writers. So we came to know uh, about the Samudan Thonglo. 
and uh, about his early life from Samudan Songlo, according to the work published by the Dimasa Sanskriti Parishwar, uh, which was written by Uttam Chand Barman, we found that Samudan was born in the tiny village of the Lankha, near the temple town of Maibang, the seat of the Rana Sandhi, uh, which with historical and cultural tradition was born in 1850 in present district of Ibahasao. Uh, his father was Deopoda Konglo and mother Kesaidi. Samudan had four other brothers also, and uh, they are Umakanta, Ramakanta, Ramcharan, Hoysalam. And it is found that although he spent his childhood, uh, childhood in his village Longkar with his parents, before long he moved himself from the village to village and for some time stayed at the Tembikar near the river Mahur and where he married Nasaidi, a de de and devoted girl. There are stories uh, around around the uh, uh, Samudan Honglo and from that, we can understand his personality that he was attracted by the people, local people, as well, uh, uh, surrounding communities because of his personality that he was, uh, uh, he was become the legendary in the folk tales and folk stories of the region. And it is also founded in S.K. Borpuzari's work, which uh, I have gone through it, that history of Dimasa, that he was a devotee of Shiva and he, instead of living a happy conjugal life, found utmost pleasure spending his life in the deep meditation. In fact, it was mentioned by the British report that Samudan had opened a clinic for treating sick people, uh, where his herbarium was under the charge of his one assistant named Design Campry. So it is, he is well connected with the people. And also, uh, uh, in fact, we can say that his cure uh, through the miraculous planting was so famous, this is still practiced among the Nivasas also. As Samudan fame as a miracle worker was become popular and so went on to claim divine inspiration and took the title of the God or the Dew. Among the Sudulwa's population of his followers were soon attracted to him and his abode Maibam with the full God, Kapila and other offering, offerings. He was warmly greeted by the people old and young and came voluntarily to join him. In a very short time, the aspartas of his uh, inspiration extended to him and they too become devs, though the Samudan was still the principal part. So uh, from these writings and from this uh, uh, from this research work of S.K. Bhagavad we came and with the help of the oral history also, Samudan personality and his contact with the people, which will greatly help to the later part of his life. And in the writings of Alexander McKenzie also, in his book, Nordic Frontiers of India, mentioned the Samudan life and three quarters in Maivang on the fourth contribution. Now, who was uh, who was given the fourth contribution? The person, the uh, person should be very attractive and person should be with a charismatic uh, leadership quality and something very helpful to the to the community as well as person concerned. So, Samudan Songlo, in a in his early life, uh, uh, has con connected with the people a lot, in the name of the devotee or, or uh, and his follower, and in the name of the running of a clinic and uh, giving the giving the uh, treating the sick people with his hard work plantation. So in a very young age, hardly he will be, if he, he, he born in 1850, he has hardly, in this, in this time, he will be only 16 years old. And 16 years old young man, a Samudhan, become so, uh, uh, so popular among the, among the community and it might have, uh, have a big uh, quality of leadership. So, and rising of a leader, in a community in a very young age, not happen in a week or in a day. The leader not created. And so it is the first man because of his uh, leadership quality and and because of the coming of the contact with the people. And uh, and also he was aware of the British uh, British establishment and British uh, uh, British uh, suppression in this region. And then later on he, in his later part, he, 
uh, he he created a training camp a training camp that is the martial training camp and he uh, trained the youth of dimasa youth of 40 to 30 in his camp at the five home so it is a great uh, great achievement or great contribution of the samudan songlo toward the toward the his co uh, uh, followers or the dimasa nation and we are uh, about now <clears throat> about the early life it is uh, it is seen that uh, he is become so popular and from the very beginning he was very active and aware of the situation now uh, regarding the regarding the time of the samudan songlo regarding the time of the samudan songlo i would like to share or uh, or uh, say that the how the contemporary socio and political activities uh, forced samudan songlo to become a leader or how he become a leader in the coming days it is not a not a not a thing that, that he is just a pick up from the uh, huge crowd of the dimasa and he he was made a leader it is not like that he, he is well aware of the situation and it is also contemporary socio political condition that he was become so uh, active against the british east india company authority now here it says that the, uh, we are well aware of the fact that the Dima, uh, about our dimasa kingdom uh, and which was annexed uh, by the british east india company the uh, plain in 1832 and the uh, hill area in 1834 because to understand the time of the samudan songlo in his activities in the later part we have to go back to the uh, our our statehood or our kingdom how from the what circumstances the samudan songlo followed or work, started to work in the later period that is it is due to the political unrest that uh, and after after the uh, after the annexation of the hill in 1832 we all came to know about that, that due to the demand of the deportee Seng Kong of the Dimasa community, the hilly trek was handed over to the Tularam Senapati, the last commander of the uh, uh, the commander of the last uh, Dimasa king, Govinda Chandra Narayan. But it is again after the death of the Tularam Senapati, the whole trek was annexed by the British East India Company in 1853 uh, by a one proclamation of Eva in 3rd December. So by this, the whole Dimasa Kingdom came under the subjugation of the British East India Company. But the most interesting thing is that the, though the British annexed the, the territory or the hilly trek, they did not have much uh, interest on, on this area uh, because, of, because of their business with the other part of the India or maybe the uh, greater part of the Assam. But it is it is the situation that the uh, uh, that the, uh, how the uh, this hilly trek was uh, neglected because it is found that the at Assam the status of subdivision was created after the annexation of the uh, Dimasa Kingdom and Tularam territory and it also not only not only marked the end of the rule of the independent hill state but also completed the subdivision of entire Dimasa territory under the British paramount. And the most importantly here is come that the, it stays under the British officer with the headquarters at Asalu. But again, when the Naga Hill was annexed and created in the new British district, then the Asalu was transferred to the Kasar in 1866. And from 1866, there was no British officer at Asalo or in the hilly area to look after the Dimasa people. And Dimasas were left for themselves for many periods. And this is due to the lack of any administrative measure or, uh, uh, and that is why because of this uh, frequent raids from the Nagas were started. And it is found that uh, from 1850 to 1862, 24 raids were done by the Nagas. And it is again interestingly and, unknown, and, uh, and for the unknown reason and the fact instead of the Dimasa that the British planted a colony of the Kikis to resist the Nagas or to defend the Nagas instead of the Dimasa. Here it is one point came to the clear that British started to share the Dimasa 
uh, maybe the uh, it is the fear of the samudan or it is the fear of the dimasa people that might be the more revive their own uh, uh, own strength to establish their kingdom again or to suit uh, in their own uh, administration so uh, from this happening we can clearly understand that the situation in this disintegrated dimasa kingdom and he sees also uh, focus the in the well or well expressed in a in a in a local chronicle which uh, by the nk barman book the queens of the qatar or heremba and the history of the qataris which here i would like to read out the paragraph the expression of the expression of the situation chaotic situation of the dimasa uh, land which was left themselves by uh, to the dimasa by the british East India company authority here is right Before the advent of the automatic arms and weapons, the European had an impalable armory that was opium. Nowhere in the length and breadth of India, the weapon has such lavishly and effectively been used as it was in case of Assam and particularly Kasar. The route, he didn't take it, he right, the martial, tried as held by Captain Fisher, emasculated and neutralized under the miracles of dozing portion and a few decades of British subjugation in the Dimasa as a whole, where enslaved sure, and right. under economic and political bondage, they were helpless since unlike Uh, Suranjana, ma'am, you've uh, uh, you'll have to unmute yourself. You got like, yeah, you got muted. Okay. So from this situation, we can understand that how the Dimasa process was suppressed by the British administration, and uh, how the condition of the Dimasa people without any leader. And without any administrative official in this region, it is very, it is very, it is very unfortunate to have that this uh, this kind of situation in the hilly trek after the trek which was once with the glory of the Dimasa kingdom with the strong leaders. The people cannot people cannot uh, uh, cannot bear the situation. So it is the people of the hill, especially the Dimasa, who once tasted the royalty of the one, who had bear the chaotic and unruly political conditions. And in that meantime, Deo fame, that which is a uh, so-called Samudan Konglo, he was become popular in that time as a Deo, because of his as a devotee of the Shiva and because of his spiritual leadership and to cure the sick people in that region. And he become popular, and he uh, and he also become connected, as I have also mentioned, that he become so popular among the Dimasa people because of his uh, because of his moving place to place, one place to the other place, and he have connected lots of people, and he can communicate with the uh, uh, with many people regarding the situation, regarding the condition, and regarding the wi- willingness to do something for the country. So. It is, uh, and he is also adored uh, by his followers very much, and who have been leading him because, uh, because as they can see that the, their fellow people were how they were uh, leading a life of miserable condition, and under the foreign rule, then Samudan who had established contact with the people, succeeded in inspiring the village against the British rule, who had not only robbed their freedom but defiled with their culture and tradition. It is the it is it is now from these lines we can understand it is the feelings of the uh, the Samudan Konglo and his follower and uh, more or less it is a it is a voice of the hill it is the voice of the field I must say because the feeling and the activities and the willingness it cannot come in a one day it is the thinking of the process process or by the by the uh, after the awareness of the situation or after the After the sufferings of the from the uh, situation, they wanted to have their revive their own independence and revive their own glory, 
and as as they tested the royal royal royalty under the Dimasa kingdom or a king. So the warrior like warrior people like Dimasa, they started to think for a new leader because that they have also embibbed with the courage and patriotism of their past heroes. Like here I mean, I will I, I want to mention the name of the heroes, the past heroes of the Dimasa ages. Rangalau, Demalu, then the heroines Wai Bengma and Wai Ringma. And, and so they wanted they wanted to have some uh, someone to come for their rescue, uh, someone that they uh, that they uh, they that can end their suffering, that they they end their uh, dependency on the British uh, under the British the Confederate. And they in the meantime, from within also with the with this group, with the trained with the, and the equipped with the martial training. And he is ready in that time. And people also in the area uh, found the charismatic leader with the prophetic power, including the assurance to mind of the follower, follower that would bring back the good old days, the probably golden days secure justice and drive away the oppression. And that is the, that is the, uh, that is the willingness of the, this community and that is the confidence of the community regarding the personality, personality like the Samudan Songlo. So in this regard, the intention of the Samudan Songlo, they are clearly, uh, clearly, we can understand clearly, from that day, he writes a band of 40 and uh, band of the youth and imparted the martial training as Dr. Sozal Nath in his paper, the professor of the uh, Assam University Department of History, he also said that in his paper, all for a buffalo, even nature and historiography of a tribal insurgency in the colonial India, where he was, uh, uh, where uh, Samudan Konglo in the, in the history writings of the Northeast India also only mentioned that he is just a uh, uh, law, law breaker, just a, like a murderer, or like a like a like a like a very uh, without any uh, without any thinking or without any uh, uh, trend, he wanted to have a uh, create some uh, uh, to break the laws, and only it is for a buffalo. But it's not done. It is not a fact of a one day, or it's not a fact of a one minute. It is the it is the process how the people of suffering, how, and the, it is the personality of the Samudan Konglo that he wanted to revive the old glory of the Dimasa kingdom. And Sazangnak also uh, uh, supported the fact that the Samudan trained the band of the youth in, met, in martial arts in the best of 30 to 40 youth. And for this, uh, for this type of activity, the young Samudan might have influenced by the resistance movement of the other part of India or not, we did not have any clue. But he was a, it was a, but it was a, as, as I know, as we know, that he was born in 1850 only and died in 1883. Uh, so it is hardly he was, a, his career was only for 32 years. And in, during the time of the 1857, it is a, it is that we are talking about the time of the era of Sipoi Mithi or the post Sipoi Mithi and before the uh, Sipoi Mithi. So in this time, it is uh, it is said many uh, many scholar of uh, of the region that it is the Samudan rising is a maybe the uh, rising of the millennium or the maybe the, in the rising of the having the continuity to go with the uh, with the with the trend of the all India rising tribal uprising. But it is uh, it is it is not the fact because it cannot be happen uh, from according to my viewpoint. There is no combination with the. Uh, other part of the other part of the India or the plains from the hilly track, they are very they were very happy with their kingdom and the king. So that it is the it is the I can say that the uh, Samudan Songlo was a self-made uh, leader of the Dimasa who stood bravely and opposed the and opposed and taken the challenge of the British Dautex and anti-zooming measure also, because in the Dautex was in that time it was implemented by the British. Because in that during that time, because of the lack of the leader, because of the, any administrative setup, the all the all the people among the various communities were there. Among the communities, there 
there were a series of the struggle among themselves. As a weapon, the most important weapon was the Dao. Uh, and so, uh, to stop the struggle or the, to stop the, these uh, fightings among the community or among the groups, the British uh, imposed the Dao tax, the tax on keeping uh, one Dao or the big knife. So it is, it is, it is against their, uh, against their, uh, uh, what to say, tradition, because the hilly area Dao has taken uh, for all purposes. And it is for the safety, or it is for the collecting of the timber, or it is for the work. And it is the handiwork for the timber as well. So Samudan greatly opposed this kind of activity. Again, the zooming cultivation. It is also forced to stop there in the hilly area because of the revenue. Because we started to think about for the plantation of the tea and herb, uh, herb which will, which will, which will, which, by which they will get the revenue from the hilly. So it is for the self-oriented administrative measure and self-oriented thinking that which was not liked by the Samudan Konglo and he with, uh, with his group uh, strongly opposed the doubt tax and human cultivation. And British not only have done this all these things, but uh, uh, British started uh, uh, started fearing uh, about the they feel the Samudan uprising is a threat to them because the in the, uh, because Indigenous recognized, based on the oral history and folk tales, said that Samudan had already decided and launching an attack on the colonial administration. And it was with the aim in view that he established based on Maibang, where he recruited young men and used his uh, abode as a training center for the youth. In fact, he selected Manting and Molongthong from among the follower as principal advisor and the commander for the purpose. So these, uh, and he also, Samudhan did impose levy, mostly in the kind like labor on the people to meet the expenses of the establishment and the demands uh, did not object to such contribution. Samudhan has established thus uh, himself as an alternative center of power with a large number of followers who paid tax to them and the British were alarmed by the development uh, development of the Samudan Tonglo. As he had won the trust of the people and he became political leader of the Hili, uh, Dimasa, as well as spiritual leader also, which is a great treat to the Dimasa people, uh, uh, for the British speaking the company of trade. And the activities of Samudan Tonglo came to the notice when an incident came uh, uh, came to place where the uh, Professor Sajal Nath said it's only not for a Hosello. It is a one, uh, Samudan Tonglo was uh, sent, uh, 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 the activities of Samudan was came to the notice of PSOP, the sub-divisional officer in that time who established in Kunjung in that time. And a summon were issued to Samudan to appear before his court on the receipt of the complaint, on the receipt of the complaint about an assault made by a plaintiff by a group of people led by Samudan for resisting the expropriation of his buffalo. So it is a uh, rounded buffalo again. But uh, then trouble started. But exact trouble started in that time. Though the parallelly both the power were there in the, uh, in the hilly trade. British East India Company are having parallelly going through their own activities, uh, uh, though not directly in the hilly area, but they were officially the owner of the hilly people. But on the other side, the Samudan Honglo also created their own, uh, own boundary of his leadership. Uh, leadership. So it is the it is this uh, it is it is the trouble started when it came as a surprise to the administration that no one either of the administrators or from the local people, people willing to carry the summon to the Sambudan. So from this, uh, from this happening, we, are, uh, we can understand that the how Sambudan personality was. He was not, uh, the people were, uh, people were not willing to give the summon because his activities were, according to the people, is the very well enough. And that is the how the all the administrator also uh, was not willing to give his summon and the local people also not willing. So it is the fact of the, it is the because of the personality of the Samudan Konglo and his power and strength of the hilly area.
student sub divisional officer this is the story of the story very interesting related to the samudan sangla how he was written by uh, how how he was become so brave that the british started to fear and it is then the uh, topi he asked the sub divisional officer then sought the assistance of the deputy commissioner major boyd then who was this gunjung and from this march to maibang where sambodhan was there with a force of 30 armed policemen now maibang this was 20 miles away from the gunjung and requiring 6 to 7 hours march uh, but the uh, but the when the boy uh, major boy reached in maibang the boy found that the sambodhan came was deserted so they are, they are uh, they are clever enough to uh, enough to go other place instead of the uh, facing the major boy uh, uh, in this in, in the place my bang and so boy decided to spend the night there and early morning will go there but it is the samudan technique and tactics in uh, in that day that with his party the samudan attack in the early next uh, day early morning the british troops and the battle followed there were a casualty of the both sides and total of the 11 followers sambodhan fell to the police bullet and major boy himself received serious injury by the sharp weapon of the sambodhan party and he was carried a carry to suicide where he died on 13 january 1882 so it is the first uh, uh, struggle or maybe the first incident or event that happened in the hilly trek uh because of they are resisting the they are uh, they are aligned ruler by the local people and it is later come to light that they hearing the information boy preaching it is also by the orality of the dimasa tradition or folk tales it is came to know us that the, when the boy came to the maiba then the uh, samudhan started started his uh, direct uh, from the opposite direction and marched to the gunjung where he attacked the administrative construction burn the home destroy the property and kill the three men two british servant and a policeman it was also found that two key militia raised by the british to defend the british so it, i have mentioned in uh, in his early life that the uh, uh, because to resist the nagarite which was happened to be the 24th Nagar, nagarite from 1852 to 52 that the british established a one kuki colony to resist the naga and kukis also by by hearing the coming of the sambodhan they also left from that place and ran away from the site of sambodhan and his party the british then launched a massive manhunt for sambodhan who remained in the hiding for about a year and was eventually captured but on the skirmish that follow sambodhan died on 12 february 1883 Thus, here they ended the attempt of Samudan the liber- uh, to liberate the country from the pinnacle of the British rule. Though the uh, now here uh, it is a uh, come to the end. Though the Samudan uprising the Brit uprising against the British was a short lived in nature, uh, but it was an important for the people of the hill as well as the British uh, uh, hill uh, and for the nationwide push because. Uh, it affected the british that after that british shifted the their uh, their center headquarter from gunjung to uh, maibang uh, uh, hafrong and it is the uh, it is there from then only the british started to think for the well administration of the of the hilly people called the dimasa and about the about the uh, though it was to discuss about the time of the samudan thonglo in which time the time of the samudan thonglo as i have mentioned about uh, it is that the it is the mutiny era 1857 all are in the all india level all are having facing the sepoy mutiny and we are in many places the tribal uprising where they are then the uh, then the then then the then these uh, what to say the sepoy mutiny the sepoys where they are and the many group group where they are against the aligned ruler or rule or the british is the company or treaty and where the rn srivastava uh, had contended that one line i would like to share that the uh, tribals 
to the tribal. Freedom means liberation from an alien system, or it means a demand of some concession from the immediate ruler. Restoration of traditional rights in land and forest. And according to him, the term freedom in the context of the tribal implies keeping ethnic norms and cultural identity intact. But here in case of the, according to uh, my viewpoint, uh, in case of the Samudan Hongro, we cannot go with the, uh, with the, uh, with the comment of the ARN Free Bhaskava because other part of the um, India, the tribal uprising were there on, uh, as a group was against, against, some, against some law or against some sufferings, etc. But the, in case of the Sambudan Songlo in Dimasa case, uprising was a nationalist, nationalistic stance uh, because Sambudan was wanted to revive, revive the old royalty. It is, a, it is a fact or it is a talk of a one big kingdom which was collapsed after the coming of the British East India Company, but not in a, uh, in, a, in a question of the one group of people. And he sacrificed his life for the peace of the people. So it is uh, uh, to, to focus as a whole about the paper, the early life and the time of the Samudan Honglo. It is uh, need to be more, uh, need to be do more research work on this, but uh, till now, we can say that the this time of the Sambudan Konglo is uh, is a, is a, is a, is a the more uh, more in a sense of the nationalistic character than the, as a tribal rising because what the ideas were developed in the later part of the India in the later period in India like the by Mahatma Gandhi or by Jawaharlal Nehru or by Subhas Chandra Bose that these ideas and these feelings were developed by uh, the Samudan Honglo in his very early days, early years, in a very uh, uh, before, uh, in a uh, in a very before before the independence, uh, long back to the independence. So it is the it is the fact and achievement and contribution of the Samudan Honglo to his people, to the country, and to us also. So I conclude my piece here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Suranjana Hasnu, ma'am. Uh, it was uh, indeed, uh, I think, uh, very enlightening. And uh, uh, you gave us a lot of insights uh, beginning from Sambudan's life and then the changing socioeconomic and political conditions during those times that, uh, I mean, brought about by the British colonial regime that uh, made Sambudan Ponglo the hero that he was and uh, the force of resistance that he represents against uh, alien rule. And I think which all of us as a community, we do, we have imbibed that and we do need to cultivate that. And uh, the spiritual aspect also that you have mentioned, which is also very interesting. And the fact remains that, uh, you know, I mean, uh, the, the Sambudan Ponglo as a man uh, of that time, and even today, what he, re what he was or what he represents, I think very less research has been done on that and uh, uh, without going into, let's say, extreme romanticization of the figure or even uh, what has happened at times that Britishers have actually read his personality as just some worthless adventurer without avoiding both these things. I hope that, you know, in the future, uh, Dimasa community and as well as others, our own scholars community, as well as other interested people can, we can do a more objective study on the life and his achievements and the and the values that Sambudan Ponglo Veer Song Shengya Sambudan Ponglo represents for us. Thank you so much, Dr. Suranjana Hasnu. Yeah, thank you very, very much for your insights. Now, moving on to the next uh, uh, talk, uh, we have with us today Dr. Santosh Hasnu. And uh, Dr. Santosh Hasnu is uh, 
just a moment. Dr. Satosh Hasnu is currently assistant professor in Hansraj College uh, in the University of Delhi. I'll be giving a brief introduction of Santosh Hasnu. He uh, has completed his PhD from the Department of History, uh, University of Delhi in 2018. Uh, his doctoral project focuses on the history of transport systems and its close linkages with the labor, war, and political legitimacy. Uh, his MPhil dissertation was on the changing political frontiers in Kachar in the 18th and 19th centuries, which looks at the colonial expansion in Kachar. He recently has also published uh, uh, in uh, he has also recently published uh, a paper titled Coolie Labor, Tea Planters and Transport System in Colonial India for an international conference for the labor and social history volume on commodity chains and labor relations from Bill, uh, Brill Publications in 2021. His other works include Disciplining the Hill Tribes into Coolie Labor for Road Construction in Gwyn Campbell and Alessandro Stanziani edited the Palgrave Handbook of Bondage and Human Rights in Africa in Asia, New York, uh, published in uh, 2020. In Inception of Aviation Routes Between India and China, which was published in the Economic and Political Weekly in 2017, August. And his forthcoming works include Colonial State and Annexation of Kachar uh, from Sage Publications, which will which is coming out in 2021. Uh, Santosh uh, teaches undergraduate history courses at Hansraj College, University of Delhi. And he has also participated in many international workshop on labor studies and transport history in Paris, Austria, Zurich, Israel, and China. And he's also currently part of the Global History Network seminar series under the WIG uh, at Harvard University. University. Uh, so we are very happy uh, to welcome Dr. Santosh Hasnu. And I'd also like to add that he's also uh, a member of Devasa Scholars League and currently in charge of our social sciences uh, uh, department. And uh, Santosh will be speaking on the assessment of the revolt uh, by uh, of uh, Sambudan Ponglo against the British regime. Yeah, uh, okay, the session, I mean, the, pro the floor is all yours, Santosh, carry on. Okay, uh, I was not able to unmute, you know. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Okay. Yes, you yes. Now I, I, I'm, am I audible? Um, I'm audible, right? Yes, you are audible. Okay. Thank you so much, Raki, for um, this lovely introduction. And Judai uh, uh, Thank you for. Um, uh, joining uh, this uh, uh, lecture or uh, this discussion on uh, uh, Samudan Punglo. And uh, um, so um, already we had heard from uh, Suranjana about the life um, and, um, uh, you know, um, uh, about the life history of uh, Samudan Punglo and uh, the struggle, the um, the history of his struggle. Um, so uh, I will be speaking uh, uh, mostly in English, and uh, um, sometimes maybe I will uh, try to, you know, translate into Dimasa, Graudima, uh, Graudimazang. So we'll try to, you know, uh, try to translate uh, some of the words into uh, argument into Dimasa. Um, so. My uh, take on uh, Sambudan uh, is quite a different um, assessment that I wanted to present. And it's a very short, uh, short uh, uh, critical perception, uh, critical uh, 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 historical, critical historical or uh, historicizing Boni uh, resistant care, Sambudan resistant care, Boni angle and Naiba. Our room. Also, uh, this work uh, that I'm doing is uh, recent 
that I had just picked up. Mananga PhD clay baha some of the documents, archival documents baha masimakni mine hit any PhD la transport history ha railway or roads or aviation kani ba. Bo time ha ang ibo documents some modern ni revol ni pari ha basically mine ka obviously there are very scanty. Uh, documents scattered around, uh, very scattered documents mentioning about uh, some Buddhan, but uh, I'm trying to piece together all those documents and try to present an argument and an understanding, uh, which is quite a different, that, that uh, different angle that I'm trying to look at. So, um, so what I'm uh, trying to uh, look at is this kind of uh, the how the existing scholarship uh, um, existing work try to had followed uh, this kind of interpretation of Sambudan Fonglo's resistance. And the existing work and scholarship focuses, mainly focuses on the uh, uh, you know uh, the colonial policy and intervention colonial intervention into North Qatar Hills resulting into, you know, uh, this kind of resistance in a rather very general way. And also uh, we see the overlook of several aspects of resistance. And uh, we see that um, many existing work doesn't take into account the diversities or other factors into uh, consideration that is associated, much associated with the resistance and why Sambudan Fonglo, uh, you know, resisted in 1881 and 82 and 83, that um, 12 February um, uh, 1883, that uh, he, the death, and we recently celebrated, uh, you know, a few days back. Um, so uh, what we see is this kind of interpretation which starts the discourse, which start from the very discourse of the colonial officials and colonial bureaucratic, uh, you know, bureaucracy that we find the description of uh, uh, Sambudan Fonglo's resistance. Now, in all this discourse that continues from uh, colonial, uh, you know, British writing, Aru, um, then it continues to, you know, the, the uh, many existing work. Uh, some of the writings follow the colonial legacy, in fact, and I will uh, try to present my case. And in fact, did not challenge uh, uh, historians, many works did not challenge this kind of colonial, uh, you know, interpretation and colonial categorization of Sambudan's uh, Fonglo's very uh, resistance that, that we see. Now, if you look at uh, all these, uh, uh, you know, uh, particularly the interpretation made in the colonial writings, we find the process of authorization. In the, so, in the discourse, uh, colonial writings in discourse, writings and hierarchical or bureau, um, bureaucratic, you know, uh, reports and hierarchical, we see uh, an authorization of the tribes. And this has been uh, the fact, to, um, uh, in fact, uh, if you look at the kind of tribal resistance and tribal revolt in the throughout the 19th century in other parts of the India. Uh, so this is true uh, with the uh, many of the tribal resistance that how colonial projected uh, tribes as something uh, uh, savage and uh, this kind of resistance and revolt uh, uh, try to, you know, otherize or uh, delegitimize this kind of legit, uh, resistance that, that we see. It's the similar case that follows with Sambudan Fonglo's resistance of uh, you know, 1882 and 83 that, that we look at. So uh, what we see this kind of construction on Sambudan's resistance, uh, it offers a linear, uh, rather a linear and a monodimensional explanation of Sambudan's rising in Maiwang, Kunjung, and parts, uh, many parts of the North, uh, North Kachar Hills. So in the explanation of colonial writings, 
this kind of uh, linear, uh, they, they offer this kind of linear explanation where it is often, uh, you know, being seen as hills or the uh, land of, uh, you know, inhabited by the tribes as the wall of fanatic, as the wall of, you know, uh, a godly, uh, the, the meaning or, or defying the, the leader itself, the, the leader of the movement by uh, cre uh, by constructing uh, uh, the leader as an image a godly image or defy uh, def defy uh, uh, you know uh, de uh, def uh, this defy question that that we see so uh, uh, sometimes uh, that the construction comes uh, you know directly as claiming it as a fanatic uh, a fanatic movement uh, However, uh, so this kind of monodimensional, what I'm trying to say is that we will find it, this explanation that we find in many of the reports, writings of the colonial administrator, um, you know, which, uh, that, that we see during the 19th century. And uh, in fact, uh, his, uh, as I argue that history is, uh, cannot, historical uh, explanation cannot be linear or rather monodimensional explanation of the past. In fact, resistance is an interactive process. So it is not something a very, you know, uh, a very simple uh, past that somebody uh, who claimed to be the, uh, who came to, uh, claimed to have, have possessed some miracle powers, who claimed to be God, and then started fighting uh, started, you know, just rise in 1882 and started uh, try to uproot the British power in North Kachar Hill. So this kind of explanation that we see rather very stereotypic, uh, typical of the tribal society of the tribal of the tribes itself, which is rather irrational and unscientific image of the tribal culture and tribal society, and we find throughout this authorization in the colonial writings as well as ethnographical accounts and and uh, uh, you know um, various anthropological studies that that we see secondly this association of some wooden bunglo with worshiver of shiva that uh, the uh, in many of the writings that you know we see often uh, particularly you know uh, we see some some of the historians trying to claim that Sambudan was a worshiver, this association uh, uh, with uh, God uh, Shiva. In fact, perhaps this is uh, an angle where we see this association with Sambudan with worshiver of Shiva as an offshoot of the complex process that led to the Hinduization of the Dimasa community. So we see a long process of interpretation where you see the otherization and and, and also uh, uh, associating Sambudan with with a godly uh, uh, godly image that that we see and then in many of the writings the historians would simply follow this categorization that the colonial uh, in many of the colonial writings that we find so uh, they never challenge this colonial categorization. And we see this in the recent event uh, in the case of Tularam, when colonial administration uh, categorized Tularam as a Senapati. And this categorization was never, is never being challenged by historian. So there is this kind of authorization that we see, the idea of other that we had, uh, uh, you know, we, we know about but, um, and this, this kind of, uh, you know, uh, um, contextualization. So um, what we see is this kind uh, of authorization that I'm, I wanted to bring in firstly and talks about elaborate why uh, the complex complexity and the uh, integrate uh, interrelated, uh, you know, uh, various factors that led to the uh, coming of the resistance led by Sambudan. So this stereotypic uh, typical begins from the very uh, report of uh, you know uh, the uh, uh, movement uh, of the rising 
that we, that we see. And I will uh, try to talk about this authorization uh, which the colonial uh, ruler or colon uh, British government tried to represent Sambudan. In 1882, an, um, an newspaper, Englishman, the Englishman, uh, which is published from Kolkata, reported a title, uh, A Rising in Kachar, Destruction of a Village. News was received on the evening of the 17th January, 1882, that the Kunjung headquarters of the North Kachar Hills had been surprised and destroyed on the night of the 15th January by some Kachari led by a fanatic. So I, I, want, uh, I would like to stress here the newspaper report of 1882 where you know, uh, Samudan uh, uh, resistance is turned down as a fanatic. The other realization starts from the very fact from here. Another source that uh, uh, that I picked it up from the archive, National uh, National Archive, that uh, is a, a telegram uh, sent by Chief Commissioner uh, to the Foreign Department at Kolkata, reporting about this rising. And I would not, uh, um, you know, try to read out only the few. Uh, stress on the few uh, line uh, rather than you know read this whole telegram. It says the chief commissioner of Assam, Elliot, uh, say, uh, writes a party of Kacharis had proclaimed someone a god. So uh, this kind of authorization continues in the colonial bureaucratic reports. For example, Alexander Mackenzie, uh, when uh, he published his work, History of Relations of the, um, of the Government with the Hill Tribes of Northeast India, which is just published uh, within around this year in 1884, uh, reports that Sambudan claimed divine inspiration and took the title of a god. So he continues, uh, uh, that uh, Sambudan uh, force, uh, you know, took force contribution. So uh, in the reports, colonial reports, that we see this kind of otherization that we need to challenge and contextualize why uh, the uh, colonial authorities reported, you know, such kind of construction that, that we see. This otherization that, that uh, we, we see of uh, the reports that continues to be uh, to be followed by many of you know uh, many of the writers without uh, you know unchallengedly following this kind of construction. So in 1882, for the colonial administration, so-called fanatic who claimed to be a god and who claimed to have possessed a miracle powers had created such you know uh, followers, and who uh, has attacked British forces. And has collected, uh, collect, started collecting their own taxes from the people living around around them. So, how does we see, or how does we explain this colonial interpretation? That is the main question that we need to ask. So, um, if you look at, uh, uh, in fact, uh, the case of the other tribal. Uh, uh, tribal movement around the same year in 1882, we see some of the tribal movement um, in, in Urissa, the similar uh, interpretation or representation of the tri uh, tribal revolt. The same goes with Birsa Munda, that, you know, uh, that colonial uh, uh, interpreted that uh, of a godly nature of a godly image of Birsa Munda. So this kind of important future of colonial, uh, important characteristic of colonial uh, approach, where we see an attempt to authorize to to you know uh, to authorize the tribal culture as something savage, primitive, and categorizing uh, people, uh, tribal people, uh, sometimes as criminal tribes, and trying to classify things which intensified with the practice of census that, that we see in the later 19th century. And marking the triumph 
of you know uh, the victory of the British government, which emerged as a savior and which emerged as a colonial uh, uh, civilizing mission that we see that British government legitimized, try to legitimize that they are here to restore peace as some fanatics, uh, you know, is, has caused a disturbance in the hill, uh, hill, uh, you know, uh, in the hill region. So this kind of general explanation continues even today and many of us understand about Sambudan Funglo. And this is where uh, I want to challenge this kind of categorization uh, and try to, you know, uh, unheard the actual factors that led to the uh, that led to the coming of the movement and and the resistance by Sambudan Funglo. In fact, uh, uh, the resistance, uh, the root cause of the resistance, uh, can be seen at the changes in the colonial administrative uh, or ad administration. Rather, however, I am not going to, uh, you know, focus on the general explanation where we see an accession of North Kachar as one of the, uh, you know, cause factor of uh, of Samudan's movement. Rather, I provide it in a very contextual setting, looking at the vital dimension, which is dimension which is missing in many of these writings. And in few minutes from now, I will try to look at these several integrate, integrate and interrelated components that led to the making of, or this coming of this, beginning of emergence of this uh, resistance. So several factors that, uh, um, that led to, you know, uh, the changes that uh, in fact, some of them uh, is related to economic changes, social factors that which uh, if I have time, then I would uh, you know, try to elaborate in my lecture today. Now, all of these uh, you know, factors uh, responds uh, to the forces which were largely external to the tribal uh, societies, its own existence. And the reorientation or the changes that the British try to introduce uh, need to be perhaps seen as part of the tribes, uh, cultures, uh, tribal societies, survival strategy that epitomize uh, resistance or that cause this kind of uh, resistance in the making. So as, uh, as in some other studies, uh, you know, um, one who is very uh, fondly remember as, as, uh, uh, know, as, uh, as good teacher, uh, one of my teacher, in fact, uh, Bhishma Pati, he talks about the case of um, the Urisa in the 19th century. Uh, the tribal movement in Urissa, that he, uh, many of these, you know, resistance uh, emerged as as a factor uh, leading to, you know, uh, reorientation of such kind of tribe, uh, tribal cultures survival strategy. And he argues here that this kind of resistance, tribal resistance, needs to be perhaps located in the very act of practicing jhum cultivation and the social relations or the kind of practices that uh, that is core to the tribing tribal society, and uh, the expansion of the uh, state or the presence of the state. Uh, what we see is that in um, release such kind of contradictory uh, future uh, characteristic, or resulted into such complex. Uh, conflict. So tribes began to encounter as colonial expansion uh, taking place into the hills. Various sets of these uh, factors are such as this uh, when uh, you know the colonial 
uh, government, the British government wanted to or sought to enforce a taxation system on the June cultivation. And the other that saw efforts to, you know, um, prevent and discourage June cultivation uh, that, that we see. And this kind of, uh, you know, changes uh, in the colonial administration uh, created suspicious that taxation would be enforced anytime in the hills and the hill tribes would be subjected to taxes and unable to practice June cultivation uh, from then. And this is uh, one of the, uh, um, similarly, we see uh, these kinds of instances, not only in the case of hill region in uh, Orissa, but in the case of North Kachar Hill. Perhaps what I'm trying to argue is that this is one of the important component that determined the way tribes, hill tribes wanted to remain in isolation and felt insecure of the kind of, you know, uh, insecure uh, about this kind of expansion of colonial administration or any other institutions of state or colonial projects such as road construction uh, and railway construction. Tribal communities feared that this was the first step. Such kind of pro colonial project policy uh, was the first step towards introducing an assessment on their, uh, you know, ancestral land. And th this would lead to, you know, um, uh, prohibition of June cultivation. Similarly, I have argued in, in another case where we had seen that in the Kasi Hills, the coming of the road construction, uh, the Kasi's, uh, hill, uh, hill Kasi's saw it as an expansion of the colonial tax regime into the hills, you know, from their base, from Silhet, from the plains of Silhet. And um, in 1829, uh, uh, the Khasis rallied around the leader and chief, Tirot Singh, to re uh, resist against this colonial expansion of road building. And, uh, you know, and this resistance that, that we see uh, lasting around till 1833 until Tirot Singh was uh, being caught. The similar case, uh, we see the similar kind of exam uh, example in other parts of India where tribes resisted this kind of colonial project. Uh, even in the Naga Hills that, that we see, the construction of roads, labor in conscription, recruitment for labor, road work, uh, led to such sparks, uh, such, kind of, um, such kind of resistance. In fact, this, uh, this is the case or, or preference for living in isolation and, and perhaps ex explain the possible reluctance of the tribal tri uh, hill uh, tribes to work on a regular basis in the road work. In fact, um, uh, a very uh, recent work um, by Arup Kumar Tata, his book is named as uh, The Final Frontier, looks at, um, it, it chronicles uh, the coming of the Assam Bengal Railway uh, throughout, you know, from um, construction of the line, railway line from Badarpur to Lamding uh, that cross North Kachar Hills. And today we find, you know, this, this railway, this legacy of the colonial railway construction. So he chronicles uh, the entire uh, process that led to this commissioning of railway track throughout the North Kachana. And what is very interesting uh, with this book and, 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 and my own work that, that we see. Um, so what I'm trying to argue is that the bringing of, the coming of the construction of roads and railway line in the Northeast region and elsewhere brought enormous consequences resulting into much resistance from the tribal community and uh, the inhabitants of the hill um, areas. 
So uh, this book uh, written by Arup Kumar that uh, he argues that a survey was carried out, a railway surveys, a survey was carried out from 1882 to 83, and talks about the resistance from the indigenous, the Masa and others led by Sambudan who opposed the intrusion of the British into their territories. Now, um, so uh, what we see is that Sambudan Ponglo's uh, resistance not unconnected with the coming of such kind of colonial project or railway line. This idea of communication and road or connecting through North Kachar Hills was conceived long before. And in uh, it figures in the writing of, you know, the colonial, uh, uh, many colonial officials report, uh, survey reports and account. For example, Jenkins and Pemberton was the first one to report on a possible road construction from, uh, uh, from North Kachar uh, in as early as in 1830s. But this, uh, this report was not materialized until, uh, until in 1880 when, uh, when the uh, headquarter, district headquarter was built in Kunjung a uh, subdivision uh, office was built in 1880, just two years or one year before, uh, before Sambudan, uh, uh, Sambudan's resistance. So uh, this idea of uh, connecting with board roads and railway line was transformed. Uh, um, you know, this idea of connecting North Kachar Hill was uh, with railway and road uh, roads was transformed into action when the government was looking for uh, the shortest route, uh, railway route to connect the tea, tea plantation of the Upper Assam to Chittagong port in, in, you know, in favor of this line rather than from the Brahmaputra Valley, uh, Valley and then to trying to avoid the uh, Kolkata, busy Kolkata port. So roads and railways that, that we see make it possible for expansion. In fact, uh, uh, it make it possible for expansion of the state to project their power and rule the hill uh, people, uh, the tribal society directly. So the, it is kind of uh, the politics of road building and uh, the legitimacy, political les uh, legitimacy that associate with such a kind of public works and colonial uh, road building projects and railway building projects. So, um, what we see is, is that uh, this kind of association, uh, this kind of inter integrate um, connection with the resistance uh, of Sambudan. With, with the coming of uh, you know, this kind of colonial projects. Another factor that uh, led to the coming of uh, uh, these uh, resistance is the uh, kind of changes that, that was brought in the colonial administrative system. As I said uh, earlier, that Gunjung was made as a subdivision in 1880 and he was to expand colonial tax regime and bring uh, uh, along as much as valets under the colonial tax regime. Uh, Soviet, uh, Soviet was in, uh, appointed as a uh, assistant political officer and posted in, uh, he was posted in Kunjung in 1880 and uh, what we see is, is this kind of uh, change reorientation in the colonial administrative system. For example, uh, the uh, villages in the, um, on the other side near Chatinga Valley, the taxes was collected by the Hill de Sildar, uh, who were, who were uh, office, uh, their office were located at Borkola. 
now Elliot, the chief commissioner, wanted all this uh, uh, this kind of reorientation to be met and and shifted to Kunjum uh, and given uh, uh, you know uh, give the power to Soviet to collect uh, and supervise uh, a taxation. So uh, a, a reorientation of the colonial tax regime that. Soviet CS Soviet was instructed to expand uh, colonial uh, admin, uh, taxation system. Soviet was, uh, in fact, appointed to to uh, you know uh, to supervise house tax for its assessment and collection to increase expand collection. In fact, from 1880, from the time of uh, uh, this coming of the subdivision. He started to assess the villages, which was rather uh, remained, uh, in fact, uh, remained unassessed for a long time since North Kachar Hills was annexed uh, after the death of uh, Tularam in 1850s. And also uh, after uh, the removal of Tularam's bought the sun. Uh, Bridgenat Borman and Kanuram Borman fr uh, from uh, from this uh, hill region to uh, Dorong district in 1862. Since then, the many of these re areas in North Kachar Hills was not brought under assessment, land assessment or any kind of land revenue system that that we see. So. Uh, Soviet was asked to supervise house tax, where he was given freedom to assess uh, the scattered villages, uh, villages located in North Kachar Hills, and decide on on the rate uh, to collect. He reports Soviet reports to Iliad, chief commissioner, in one of the letter in the 18 uh, in 1881, says that his assessment uh, uh, follows as as follows: rupees two on Kachari and rupees 1.8 anas to uh, the Nagas and the Kukis living in uh, North Kachar Hills and various others, you know, different rates that the uh, house tax that has been exacted from the hill tribes in the North Kachar Hills. And in fact, uh, Soviet uh, uh, pointed out that this assessment falls unequally and he suggested for restructuring, further restructuring of the tax system. The new tax, tax system was to include the Tao tax. Now, uh, what is this Tao tax? A Tao tax, uh, where he defined, where he tried to, you know, aim to uh, bring every adult, adult male under the uh, purview of taxation. So he planned to tax on every adult male in order to bring this kind of homo uh, homogenization of the tax, colonial tax regime and administration that, that we see. In fact, um, when Eliot visited when, um, after Sambudan has struck and burned down uh, uh, the Kunjung uh, station, um, political office station, uh, Elliot, the Jeep commissioner, visited, and in fact, he was unsatisfied with the success uh, of uh, with the with the kind of progress and that uh, uh, that Soviet was, uh, you know, uh, conducting. And in fact, Elliot suggested to further uh, uh, bringing reforms in the structure. He suggested, the chief commissioner of Assam suggested that the Gangburas should act like a colonial agent and should come, they should be asked to come to Gunjung once in a month. And they should understand that they have to look to their white sahibs for friendly guidance. So this kind of restructuring, reorientation of the colonial administrative system um, and mainly the tax regime, uh, restructuring of tax regime, in fact, sparked the you know the resistance 
that some wouldn't read it around and 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 the movement how the movement uh, are resulting into so what i'm trying to uh, argue here is that these are some of the futures uh, which are intimately involved with the survival strategies of the tribes or tribal community uh, which were aimed at retaining the access such as access of the forest and also to resist the efforts to assess uh, land uh, and and collect tax uh, on the shifting cultivation so some of the uh, um, some of this in fact um, the colonial reports does brings out why uh, in fact um, brings out why some wooden's resistance uh, started in 1881 particularly targeting Uh, this kind of restructuring bring um, brought under um, um, brought by the expansion of the colonial uh, uh, colonial administrative system so um, these are some of the core um, argument that um, uh, which i feel were mostly missing from uh, from uh, 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 while looking at uh, uh, colonial uh, or uh, or looking at a sambudan's resistance that that we see i could um, go on talking about the larger you know administrative uh, uh administrative you know restructuring that has that has brought uh, various you know um, um that has that uh, has relate uh, you know directly led to the coming of of this kind of um, this kind of resistance by of, of sambudan but uh, i think uh, is there we are sort of time uh, so i would like to stop and then uh, maybe take uh, further you know um uh, questions or maybe response to to the questions okay yeah okay thank you so much uh, santosh that was uh, uh, indeed uh, i think uh, you've uh, gone into the details uh, about uh, on how did the actual uprising the resistance by sambudan ponglo actually came about and i think it uh, i today's talk actually what the uh, you know uh, the areas that dr suranjana hasnu uh, concentrated on and she touched upon i think it's perfectly complemented by what now you have added to uh, you know today's discussion. discussion uh, so that was really wonderful thank you so much uh, i think we can take a few questions or perhaps comments for both the speakers of today's evening and uh, i would request the participants to please uh, you can unmute yourself and ask your questions uh to both the speakers or to the speaker concerned or else you can type your comments in the chat box and i'll be very happy to read them out for you yeah anyone uh do we have any questions or comments coming in hello uh, am i audible yes yes hello oh uh, this is yes. shivraj oh uh, okay ah uh, ani i will okay i will speak in dimasa only ani kisar kisar network problems langba but uh ang kisar khana wale chala माने सेंट्रल इंडिया बिरसा मुंडा के पूरा एज ए गॉड गुसी ना ट्राइबल कम्युनिटी ओके रेस्पेक्टली डू सेलिब्रेट फ्लै डू सिमिलरली सेंट्रल इंडिया ने बनी ओले ट्राइबल रीडर बहुत सिमिलर टाइम निके ओले जादू दुहा एंड इवन इन दिमा हासा हबो एज यू हैव सेड ब्रिटिशर्स रा ओले नु बुके ना फुनुबा लाइक मासी फैनेटिक माने रिलीजियस लीडर ओ ओले But uh, in Central India, Jing, so they now do sell up. They took forward. I mean, tribal stuff. Okay, accept book like that. Or do have some olive like that. Even And us, Jini, I think. Uh, <laughs> Jing Boda. Uh, Jing Boda. Jing Boda. Uh, <laughs> That's what I begin bola, with you saying bola, that. Ah, ah, bola artificial, artificial slum. Malay, jaha, which we took up. 
na or what is the right way to celebrate samuran thonglo and the question bonung se like what he would <laughs> want himself to be remembered as that is very difficult i i think to to talk about but um what i'm trying to say is this kind of stereotypical that try to delegitimize the very factors that led to the coming of this resistance uh and sambudan how sambudan you know started uh the movement by uh, by you know categorizing him as as a godly uh, godly figure uh, who who has a baseless claim so this is an uh, unscientific uh, kind of irrational uh, kind of image uh, image that was actually that we see in colonial writings which would not what uh, samudan might not have you know uh, might might not have a, a want to be uh, remembered uh, so i i look at uh, i i i what i'm trying to argue is that uh, we need to look more uh, in an analytical in a uh, historicize uh, this this how this movement has uh, emerged uh, the factors main factors um it's it's and then ss colonial writings also and uh, we see that many of us has uh, uh, just followed this kind of colonial uh, images and construction without uh, without challenging these categories in fact uh, so i i don't know whether <laughs> this get uh, uh, we, uh this answers your question queries oh so <laughs> Uh, any how much are much uh, following questions like no like if i have time uh, oh. okay yeah, so, yeah okay then <laughs> it's quite when i have like controversial like what we have been doing and mobile project like how bola po and one more question ma'am nik like the jing jing din rakhna bole history court fly do bola writers from na not from the sabal matlab sabal community mane um British writers, historians, but mostly from ah, uh, Bushiburan. No, Bushi. Did you know? Jing, na retla ilabas eh. Mane na jing Bushiburan. Did you know? As a source, lana na chilabas eh. But ma'am mention book like ha je ah, uh, jini oral history wo bani reads eh. Na ah, uh, travel community ni especially jin di masan ke la jing chila do. Jini ah, uh, oral history wo bani reads eh. So thiya la ah, ebo conflict bo jang solve ja funang chhi bo ni ani mane isha. uh mane doubt but constitutions like for example do have britishers now all the rap origin do internet is my khabo jing ole nudu like they try to present it as some religious leader worshippers of shiva uh sumbran ka mobilize like ka labu ka bobran ke jing la nudu but jini oral history mane bogel bola ke pane jing authentic lai bola pure like jini mane what came down bo ha bojang e bojang bele similarity na difference dong bokhe sang Yes, yes, I'm getting your point. Yes, ma'am. As I have said, yeah, as I have said earlier, that we must have more research on this because what we have read out, what we have discussed today, uh, it is all about the interpretation in the interpretation from the point of the British historian, British record, and the, some of you are the, from the local chronicles or the, that means local writers, and the, uh, some of our the research work. Uh, research work done by the Saitya Sabha, and these Saitya Sabha work and the local chronicle, I I believe it uh, only come can come from the oral history or orality of the Dimasa people. But it is the fact that the whenever you are not in the field yourself about uh, on your own community, own people, then the other cannot understand well enough. It is up to uh, up to us now. how to interpret and how to project our leader in the national level, uh, uh, national level or in the history of the history writing of the uh, nation wide so it is our our interpretation we have to go to the in charge of the oral history in the village to village and collect the material and to present in a very authentic way it is their view point according to them that the samudan was like the fanatic like the so yes 
uh, from the point of view the record if the record says that he was a follower of the he was there uh, he was there he was there he was a, he, he pretended the sick with his herbarium it is okay but though uh, even if he was a follower he even if he was a he he treat the sick but he can be also a national leader his feelings towards his community love of his own nation own community and about the about the unruly activities of the british and authentic rule and uh, the suffering the the standing of these uh, samudan songlo in that situation he become maybe from the background maybe from the these a uh, courier or the sibo uh, follower he was a national leader to think about their own people so that is the it is our time to represent our leader as how we, we interpret or how we wanted to see them is it okay now oh uh, yes ma'am uh, i cannot agree more with you like uh, it's true jing jar research le lakala hamro nang and uh, mm, uh, a, i think <laughs> yes mm -mm. we should have a more research on that because oh. it is due to the lack of the research that we mm -mm. cannot have any record about the samudan mm. songlo what the other writers have uh, write down mm. but chronicles mm. like that the nk nk uttam san nk barman they are the one people mm. they have gone mm. to i think they have gone to the orality because uh, mm -hmm. before before they are writing there is a no record mm. it is only come it can be only come from the orality of the dimasa people or the tradition of the dimasa people is it Yes, ma'am. I think this is a very beautiful point that you have added, and we as a Dimasa Scholars League should, I think, note this <laughs> uh, because so, uh, it's, yeah, it's in, time. Uh, yes, I think yeah. Yeah, Santosar wants to add something. Uh, okay. yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I, I think um, what I what I want, wanted to add is that I don't mean to say that it was not an anti-colonial. Uh, resistance it is rather an anti colonial but i am what i'm suggesting is to uh, ask uh, questions on colonial sources as we are as a historian we are taught to ask this very sources why such categorization and otherization of of the of uh, tribal community uh, in the colonial um, uh, colonial writings so it is it is this that Uh, in the colonial writings, this kind of authorization, we need to ask questions and uh, maybe take a different approach to understand and uh, uh, the the various you know uh, main factors that led to the making of this uh, um, uh, making of this you know um, uh, uh, resistance or movement led by Samudant. So in fact, um, uh, what uh, i had i had escaped many of these you know uh, uh detail uh, discussion on uh, such kind of reorientation of the administrative system so similarly we see the case of tularam they said pointed out and we need to ask questions why uh, tularam uh, uh, was deprived from uh, uh, the plain kachar uh, from controlling the plain kachar and uh, rather uh, the colonial writings are simply without questioning that we follow that he he was um, he was such and such he was you know coming from not from a loyal royal family and uh, and his his uh, his lineage was being questioned by the colonial uh, colonial government and uh, and we know uh, the main uh, reason why you know the the colonial government wanted you know to look like uh, Uh, it's like they are following the rule of the law so in terming both tularam and 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 then uh in terming you know sambudan as some fa fanatic uh they try to create this image of a wall uh, where tribes are considered as you know primitive savagery uh, savage and uh, uncivilized and the uh, peace and stability Uh, that we we are here to restore this peace and order and the peace and order is is uh, is is seen by tr trying to introduce this kind of taxes regime and of, um, also we see this kind of how uh, they wanted to uh, expand this tax regime and once gunjung ha po uh, administrative office set up clay bani thong 1818 thong then the process was going on uh, and uh, elliot uh, jeep commissioner was giving this talks 
to negotiate with uh, village head. Uh, in fact, the, the very institution of this kind of structure, uh, uh, Gambura headman, uh, visiting them, visiting the village, subjecting to taxes. And we see the same case in Naga Hills, how the Angamis, uh, Angamis were, uh, Angamis protested uh, against this kind of restructuring or expansion of the state. In fact, um, I'll, I'll point out to the work which, which political scientist James Scott uh, talk about in, the, in his book, The Art of Not Being Governed, uh, saying that we, we see that uh, uh, the, there is a jom, which we see term as jomia. Uh, jomia are the reason that he talks about Northeast and Highland, uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, Burma, uh, Cambodia, Laos, that he talks about that, um, and including Northeast India, that he says that uh, these are joined which are nothing to do uh, with the state, non-state spaces that he talks about, describing both the geography and the people who had escaping or evading the tax. So uh, the, the kind of, uh, you know, uh, tax regime has not expanded to this uh, to this reason and and this is how we we uh, we need to challenge uh, in fact where colonial interpretation of looking at jum cultivation uh, as something primitive or practiced by the savage because they wanted to introduce cultivation in fact when Eliot visited during 1882 he found in mahur a suitable location for uh, for uh, uh, timber cultivation. And he instructed that the Jum cultivation to be stopped, to be prohibited, and reported back to the forest department to conduct a survey in, in North Katsar Hills to, to bring under more under uh, this reason under uh, uh, timber cultivation and to export this timber back to Europe. In fact, uh, during the same time, and I forgot during my lecture, um, during my course of discussion that uh, the Angamis, the fear of the Angamis created tension uh, and it was a worsening uh, trait for Chief Commissioner of Assam that the Angamis were, were illicitly trading in uh, arms. And in 1881 and 82, the Angamis were trading with the traders, uh, in fact, uh, from Silhat and Chittagong area, um, you know, um, buying arms. And, and they were, in fact, uh, a threat to the British position in the hills. Another reason was that before 1882, that they found out an Italian trader named Negri, who were uh, illicitly uh, bringing all the opium in the North Kachar Hills, and and he was uh, he was seen as this Italian uh, you know businessman was seen as one who is controlling the opium uh, opium uh, trade in North Kachar Hill. Afim na Gani na Gani Lungya Gani bo smoke clever. So uh, he instructed Soviet Soviet ke instruct like ki wo opium tibote particular area ha jing establish klena or particular area ha so that uh, the british government would bring under such uh, control and bring them you know increase the tax regime tax pool yeah, just like the modern state we have uh, where uh, government wants you know to increase uh, gst taxes as much as you know uh, or income tax so uh, colonial state uh, the British state wanted to expand uh, this kind of tax regime. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, we have another question from Rohit, and uh, it's to uh, yeah, this I, I saw that uh, address to both the speakers. Uh, so he asks, uh, it has been established that Sambudan has resisted uh, the British, but did the concept of nation building or re-establishment of the Dimasa kingdom figure anywhere in his mind? In other words, were there any political undertone to his resistance? 
I think uh, Surajana Madam has, uh, you know, let, uh, touched upon it a little bit in her uh, presentation. I think both the speakers can uh, now, uh, uh, you know, uh, respond to this question in detail. Okay. Uh, let me give the question of Rohit. Now, regarding the aims and objective of uh, we have to go more details on this uh, topic. But his, uh, his activities during the, during the period of, uh, as I have said, the, the mutiny era and uh, during the political condition of, uh, of the chaotic condition, I must say, that is the loss of the sufferings were done and uh, the British imperialism also penetrated in the Northeast region. As, uh, as Dr. Uh, Santosh has also mentioned about how the taxes were done, how the railways were constructed, how the uh, taxes increased to the Timasas and the Nagas were limited. So these kind of activities where they are not awarded by the uh, Samudan Tonglo. And he reacted against it. Without, uh, about his aim and objective, it is, uh, it is, not, uh, it is unknown till, uh, till that because due to the lack of the research. But his activity proved that he, uh, we must say that the, he, is a, uh, he is in the process of the one kind of the nation building. Or if not, it will, he is the savior of his community to revive the old kingdom, to, to, uh, to get rid of the or to come out of the his aligned rule that is so-called the British imperialism. So in short, I must say that the, uh, the, that the Samudhan activities and work in that period is a process of the uh, revival of the old glory of the Dimasa kingdom and to become dependent, independent, and to have a flash rule from the, uh, from the out, uh, out of these aligned rules that is the British East India Company. Thank you. Santu, uh, Dr. Santu Sasnu can say on this. Yes, yes, you can see. Okay, I was not, I was, okay, I was muted. Okay, this um, question, uh, query about Rohit. <laughs> yes. I, uh, uh, the one, uh, let me try to look at, where is it? I'm sorry. I think uh, uh, the idea of a nation is a very modern uh, concept. Yes. And uh, uh, in fact, India as a nation state uh, you know, emerged in 1947. And uh, uh, applying this term nation and nation building for 19th century is, uh, I think, is not uh, uh, something that uh, uh, you know, not suitable. See, the concept, the idea of a nation, in fact, uh, as uh, Benedict uh, Anderson in his Imagine Community uh, argues that uh, it's, it's rather originated from uh, Europe, uh, in Europe in 19th century, and uh, print capitalism, where uh, he, he talks about through print uh, capitalism as a factor of, of cons um, you know, constructing this idea of a nation. And in late 19th century, how the nationalist leaders, especially the Congress, uh, Indian National Congress leaders, uh, and, and which we known as uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, the, the all you know, uh, uh, nationalist leaders uh, were the ones who started to construct uh, the idea of, uh, idea of nation. And um, now, the idea of nation is a political uh, construct, and it keeps changing. Uh, and uh, so it's it's uh, it's kind of valueless, and uh, I would not uh, uh, apply uh, uh, the is, term uh, 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 nation for such a early uh, yes. period. And uh, uh, also, if you look at uh, Sambudan's uh, revolt. Um, one has to look at uh, the kind of, you know, how much he, he has rallied in, in, in the areas that he has rallied around. Though his his movement was felt in um, in the plains, Kachar, which is Silchar or 
areas of sales and he was in fact uh, the last i think he breath he he uh, you know he, he took his last breath um, in uh, in uh, uh, plain kachar so um, so we need to look at uh, when we when we look at the modern uh, dimasa uh, we we conceive construct this idea of dimasa stay uh, this kind of dimasa territorially uh, it's it's quite uh, difficult to a certain i think uh, um uh, one i think uh, samundan was not better enough to think for the nation building but he just according to my view point he just wanted to revive the uh, royalty once again and to save the people from this aligned goal in <laughs> <laughs> without um, the, without the modern concept we cannot say it is a, is a nation building process so i might say it is a it is a for the revivalism of the whole uh, quality or the strength of the dimasa community in that point yeah to, to some extent i think yeah. but uh, what i what i feel is that um, Um, there are lots of uh, missing uh, missing uh, uh, you know you, you, stories that that we cannot uh, uh, what we see is that uh, conclusive we can't derive in a, a very conclusive manner uh, so uh, for example uh, he did not throw his genealogy uh, in in when we talk about that he tried to restored the masa kingdom and uh, uh, what we see is this one of the one of the mechanism to claim is by restructuring your genealogy and claiming to 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 have uh, the legitimacy to rule uh, over uh, the the dimasa kingdom and we already uh, have uh, you know uh, the last uh, the annexation of north kachar hills by 1850s and then uh, the last uh, the, the son of tularam were already relocated and they were they were in fact um, if i have to see uh, yeah uh, look at um, one of the documents in in kacha uh, in not uh, in national archive and they were being uh, the two sons of tularam were being relocated to uh, to uh, dorang district and they were with a warning by the government British government to both of them saying that not to implicate themselves in any intrigue against British government and um, the context the pretext in which annex uh, the government annex north kachar was the uh, angami uh, attack in semkor where according to the treaty signed between tularam and uh, the british government in 1834 uh is that any kind of uh, you know this kind of uh, attack on the foreign uh, never that the first the, the the chief or the ruler has to take uh, you know um, advice from uh, from the british government without and this was uh, the attack on the angamis retaliation on the angami villages by the son of tularam was seen as violating of this treaty and that provide the pretext of annexing the north kachar and from 1854 till 1880 81 82 uh so there is a missing you know this this kind of you know 20 uh, 30 years uh, that we see and uh, we do not find any of these such instances where sambodhan try to claim uh, as a ruler or as a as a as a as a king because when tularam did send his application he sent his sub, uh, support from the 40 sangpung 40 sub, uh, sangpung supported his candidature and uh, when he uh, sambodhan came and nothing can be you know and uh, in fact uh, the what i'm trying to argue here also is that the kind of reorientation that uh, the expansion of tax regime brought by uh, by setting up the subdivision office in kunjung in 1880 and the next year where soviet is trying to you know expand 
uh, the colonial administration and tax structure and uh, 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 improving communication road network. So this would seen as uh, the colonial expansion. Road itself is a site of political contestation. And this is not to be seen or, or, or prohibition of Jum cultivation. And in all of these colonial writings, these are seen as a characteristic of a savage. But, uh, uh, but uh, this kind of practice is rather not a primitive uh, culture. It is as in the words of James Scott, that it is chosen politically. It's a political choice to live uh, um, you know, uh, as a non-state in the non-state spaces and resist this tax regime. And uh, uh, what we see is that this kind of uh, resistance that uh, uh, in the form of, you know, if, if you look at some wooden fung law, when, when Sobit wanted to, um, the political assistant, political assistant uh, officer posted in Kunjong and he wanted to expand uh, this kind of colonial administration. And then, uh, and also the coming of the railway when uh, Bayer, uh, chief executive uh, engineer, uh, J.W. Bayer was uh, sent to North Kachar Hill in 1882 to survey, conduct survey. And the survey is, uh, uh, he, he, he's not coming alone, you know. He, he has to come with more coolies and, you know, and that means coming of, coming of the plains people, coming of the people who are not, not, uh, uh, you know, tribal and and in fact, Soviet tried to recruit to assist um, J W um, J W Bayer, the, the chief executive engineer. In fact, in this that I I hold a report from 1882 uh, survey survey reports of uh, J, uh, Bengal Assam State Railway through North Kachar, and J W report says that he thanking uh, Soviet for bringing, uh, you know, assisting him with coolies. And the conscription in the hills uh, is, is again one main, main factor of, you know, uh, resistance in many parts of India, in the tribal region, in Urissa, in Naga Hills. Conscription is, is in the Na uh, Naga Hills, Kasi Hills has been protested and resisted. So uh, this could also meant, meant that, you know, um, perhaps this kind of policy followed by the colonial administration uh, brought, you know, such kind of relit around, you know, uh, by the Samudan for, for uh, become a main uh, factors for resisting. Okay. Um, uh, yes. Um... Okay, uh, Dr. Suranjana Hasnu had to leave the meeting because uh, she has another uh, talk she has to attend to. And she has thanked Dimasa Scholars League for this wonderful discussion that we have had today. Um, if there are any further uh, questions uh, we will be taking or uh, comments or else uh, uh, we can uh, maybe conclude. Uh, are are there any other uh, any further comments or questions? Okay, I'll just read out a few comments, and after that, <laughs> we'll be yeah. closing uh, today's discussion. Uh, Shivraj has uh, added that these layers of information are indeed very intriguing and precious. As a student of non-history background, it is very difficult for us to have this kind of access. Uh, to this information. And the most beautiful part is that we have speakers of our own community. I hope we as a DSL community can take this matters forward and more contributions can be made with more authentic and unbiased researches, which is the need as we have indeed discussed today. And uh, Rohit has also added that uh, uh, he thanks both the speakers for their responses. And uh, he says, thank you for the answer. Much humbled by the wide knowledge provided on 
the life of Sambudhan. Uh, I agree with both uh, uh, Rohit as well as Shivraj. I think, you know, this uh, talk was indeed very rich with a lot of detailed information and insights and uh, extremely grateful to both the speakers. As, uh, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to give any closing comments, but uh, since I'm hosting today's uh, discussion, I'll just take the liberty all on my own. I, uh, I think uh, I uh, agree to both the with both the speakers in uh, uh, some uh, uh, I don't think they were varying uh, like you know uh, uh, as much uh, and uh, I think in some areas I can agree with both uh, Dr. Santosh Hasnu as well as Dr. Suranjana Hasnu and maybe in some areas I think perhaps uh, uh, yeah uh, uh, maybe not to a certain extent. Uh, like uh, sometimes uh, what I have felt, uh, uh, my, uh, like, you know, uh, Dr. Santosh was uh, perhaps sometimes the reading uh, of uh, the events of that time, you know, sourced from all the colonial accounts. And I'm not saying that uh, you ever said that it was not an anti colonial resistance, mm -hmm. but perhaps sometimes it just sounds a little, or maybe the reading or the interpretation, uh, it becomes a little. Uh, 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 how should I put it? Um, uh, it lacks, uh, I, I don't know, use a negative term like lacks, but then uh, any uprising, any revolt, the kind of passion that goes into uh, the, the such, a, such, such uprising, I think maybe uh, you could perhaps uh, 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 like, you know, I mean, you can be that impassioned historian and then uh, as well as uh, unbiased historian, but then again, perhaps um, with figures such as Sambudan Ponglo, uh, uh, we could add a little bit uh, of, uh, what do you call that? I don't know. I'm again, uh, okay, I'm not able to make my point very clearly, but then sometimes it does feel a little, uh, uh, the term I think I was going for was uh, the asynchronic, uh, uh, asynchronic reading of uh, the events that happened during Sambudan's time. Because even when it comes to something like nation building, yeah, I mean, nation building is a very modern project. There is no doubt about that. But then again, uh, I think uh, uh, Sambudan in many ways, we don't have to look at uh, the modern nation state of the European times. But then again, I think he was definitely, uh, 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 I think, representing the views of the locals of not just the Dimasa community, perhaps other communities also, because uh, the Britishers coming in, an alien regime coming in without seeking any legitimacy from the local population and attacking the land and livelihood and uh, with the colonial expansionist, uh, uh, you know, expansionism represented by the road and the railways or the conscription, and then, you know, giving out such orders to the local Gamburas to come and accept the, you know, uh, rule of the South Sahibs, the of the you know white sahibs and all that. I think that itself, I think resisting something like that itself, you know, goes to show that there was a nationalist, if not nationalist in the sense of the uh, modern nation state. But you know, I mean, going back to our own uh, prime, uh, pr uh, the primordial identities, you know, that kind of uh, the nationalist sentiment was, I'm sure, obviously there. So I think. Uh, my comment would be that to Dr. Santosh Hasnu. And of course, uh, Dr. Suranjana is not here. I mean, she's left, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, for, for me, it's somewhere uh, going for the middle path, you know, not going to the extreme romanticization of any, uh, any historical figure. And at the same time, I think uh, 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 sometimes an unbiased reading also becomes a little mechanical. So I think with those comments, I think uh, I, I, I am not very sure whether I've made sense. But in the meantime, actually, we've had more. I think we have had more questions coming in. Uh, I don't know if uh, you would like to take them up. Yeah, I, I think I can. I mean, okay. we'll, uh, no. what's, what's the question? I know it was it was just I think few days back uh, that uh, uh, you had asked me to you know give a talk on uh, some wooden fonglo and uh, I was uh, in the middle of uh, some other uh, project and uh, and I thought uh, it will be <laughs> rather impolite to turn down and uh, uh, I tried to piece together what 
kind of uh, uh, sources that is being uh, sources that has been uh, collected by uh, me during my PhD and uh, it's a very less time to look at but what usually historians I try to present the case what use usually historians look at uh, such historical past uh, uh, you know putting or placing it at, at its context space and time and uh, that is how <laughs> I, I try to you know uh, move in the direction by putting uh, you know placing Samudan's um, resistance uh, into its own uh, uh, context space and time so uh, in a way I try to uh, look at questioning the earlier uh, con um, imagine uh, construction of uh, Sambudan Funglo. Agreed, yeah. Uh, so the, this uh, last question, okay. Yeah. Do you want me to read out? Uh, no, no, the... uh, I think Dhruvo was asking uh, Rani Lakshmi Bhai and leaders of her age. Okay. Uh... Um, and they provide great source of patriotism, one make instigated by other uh, It's, I think it's the same case. Uh, the answer lies because here, in fact, uh, when we celebrate 12th uh, February as is that anniversary or, or in the um, month of October, I think uh, his birth anniversary. So uh, uh, every, um, uh, historical, I mean, uh, figure has the, it's almost the same position that Rani Lakshmi, what Rani Lakshmi Bai meant, uh, her, her protests and revolt, it's the same. I, I, I felt uh, they all have equal position in the past. Uh, and historian cannot, you know, uh, discredit, <laughs> I think, uh, one over another, that Samudan's uh, uh, resistance was more important or it's a source of you know it's it's you can say that Samudan unites the resistance unites the masses across different regions and uh, so it's a it's a legacy uh, that we uh, you know uh, every now and then we remember uh, it's it's there in the dimasa pass you know memory this kind of memory so we see this importance of his uh, uh, resistance, which is anti-colonial in nature, <laughs> uh, obviously. And this would be part of, uh, you know, uh, the only thing is lagging is that uh, 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 there's no figure in many of the historical writing. Even uh, as I said last time that in the historical book, uh, or uh, he is being wrongly represented sometimes. And uh, I could point out one example where Sambudan is considered to be, you know, uh, a leader of the Kachanaga or Kachanaga protests is resistance. And it's uh, some books, it just occupy a, a footnote or a reference. And uh, uh, Maybe uh, there are, you know, lack of historical inquiry and uh, many absence of uh, uh, historical study on Sambudan. And uh, uh, it's not that we, we, uh, we have many writings, but we need to uh, replicate it by public, uh, publishing in a good journal and which is widely, uh, widely circulated uh, and, and it has this wide audience. Uh, and that is how you know we see such historical figure uh, is known to a wide number of people, many people in India, and and it's the case of many many such historical figure who has uh, such uh, played a very important role uh, in the anti-colonial. In fact, um, you know uh, that's why we see the emergence of the subaltern school. Uh, subaltern school or historiography, where the, the subaltern school, though now, uh, in fact, uh, the end of the subaltern studies, in fact, they they try to focus on the histories of the subaltern, and histories those who have, uh, you know, those who have no uh, record historical writing, 
and and they try to bring uh, you know into highlight of many of these such kind of historical figure that contributed in the, this history of uh, anti colonial uh, colonialism uh, uh, colonialism or uh, you know uh, challenge to imperialism okay yeah. um so uh, right so Shibana? one can i think uh, one can look at uh, to uh, just like i try to place a north kachar and assam uh, look at uh, you know uh, in terms of um, say global history networks that you know connected so i look at all these places how they were connected to europe uh, mar market in europe how tea was uh, ex um, exported to europe and uh, and this transport playing a very important role and this is how uh, the the angle of global history uh, that i try to um, bring in and uh, and also uh, uh, 19th century are not a bounded space you know uh, nation state uh, the emergence this bounded space emerges uh, with with the coming of the nation state and uh, so we have to go beyond this nation state framework when you look at 19th century uh, colonial uh, northeast then only we derive at uh, many so many answer uh, so we within the purview of you know nation state framework we cannot look at uh, 19th century or say early 20th century uh, okay so uh, rubo wants to uh put one last query so i think we'll that will be the last uh, query of the evening and then after that we will close today's discussion yes rubo please uh, uh you can type your uh, que uh, query here or you can just unmute uh, your uh... ask the question yeah that will be better Okay, uh, Drubo, you can just uh, unmute yourself. Yeah, unmute and. Yeah, there are criticism uh, of uh, you know Subaltern School of uh, History Writing and. Uh, uh that led to the i think decline of subaltern school but uh but you see many historians contributing uh, such uh, you know very important works uh, look at you know writings of uh, ranajit guha and ajay sakaria uh, um example of uh, this kind of bhil community uh, these writings which uh, in fact um, it will give you uh, more insights into looking at Uh, the history of of of, of tribal community, and uh, in fact, uh, Ajay Sagaria's work is very influential. Uh, it influenced, you know, and gave me so much, uh, you know, ways uh, 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 direction to look at history where uh, where uh, history of the people who has no records or, or something like that. You know, um, another is Sahid Amin that. Uh, look at the kind of interpretation that the contribution uh, he belongs uh, is also writing about uh, chori chora uh, the book um, uh, event metaphor no? that that book on uh, chori chora in uh, uh, event uh, bringing in uh, this kind of micro history perspective and i think uh, um, uh, micro history uh, adapting to this analytical framework provides a larger picture Uh, so um, the importance of micro history today uh, as as historian uh, focus on and uh, uh, micro history lets us uh, allows us to uh, questions uh, more intensively you know intensive study comprehensive study uh, many uh, historians has adopted this uh, this uh, methodology 
Okay, so Dhrubo's uh, complete <laughs> question has come only now. So basically, he ha he feels conflicted about uh, the subaltern school of his history writing and then the nationalist schools uh, of history writing. And then, so I think uh, the point is, which should we be following as subalterns? Because, and what would what could be the consequences if we follow the ideology of the subaltern history? Uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, to add to that, uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, Shivraj actually uh, uh, sent me a question. I think that he, by mistake, he, that question was put to me privately instead of uh, a question to everyone. I think uh, this question will, com this question from Shivraj will uh, complement Dhruba's question. So there is another, uh, this query is by Shivraj who asks, Nowadays, we see Hindutva forces trying to hijack tribal leaders for political subjugation and popularity. Recently, we have seen posters and calendars being made where leaders like Sambudan Ponglo and Rani Gaidiliu are celebrated along with other Hindu leaders of the mainland. And how fine is this? Should we be worried about it? If so, how can we tackle it? So on one hand, we have a criticism of the subaltern school of thought, and then we have another one uh, about the fears and insecurities of our people regarding the uh, Hindu nationalist school of thought. So how would you respond to that, uh, Dr. Santosh? Yeah. Uh, I'd already, I think, uh, to some extent, answer the subaltern history, voila. And uh, 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 it's it's up to you. I mean, uh, look at uh, the methodology. I think uh, some of the methodology would uh, be perfectly suited for the kind of study that you wanted to make, and uh, the the methodology that uh, the historians of the subaltern school might be very helpful. You know, uh, uh, might be very helpful. Though there are, uh, I I agree with it that uh, there are uh, you know much conflicting. Uh, uh, criticisms with the kind of uh, the kind of you know the line of studies that subaltern school has focused on and, and this in fact led to the decline as I said uh, to uh, 1960s and 1980s I think uh, until then that we don't see now uh, subaltern uh, a very active subaltern studies uh, school of thought that that we see. Um, with regard to yes, there has been uh, which uh, event uh, I, I forgot the uh, name of the writer. I think he's a Manipuri. Mm, he's he's uh, Jamie or uh, Zeliang, um, the writer who talks about this kind of how uh, the, the Hindu forces try to hijack <laughs> Rani Gaidilu's uh, you know le legacy and uh, and and see the conflict that it has in the Naga Hills where. The government earlier wanted to build, uh, wanted to construct uh, Rani Gaidulis, uh, uh, something hall or community hall in the name of that. And Naga started to protest and talks about, uh, you know, protesting against this very colon uh, state's um, project. Uh, so uh, there are, uh, you know, uh, the, the problem is that. Uh, as, as already Raki has pointed out, the problem of romanticizing and uh, uh, associating such uh, uh, such movement or uh, uh, in in uh, and such line, I think it's a it's a problematic, and uh, we should uh, we should actually uh, look at what uh, what whether the actual factor that led. To do this uh, coming of this resistance. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Perhaps it will be a difficult project, but then and a complete. You're muted. Mute. Lucky you have gone yeah. mute. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like I said, uh, it's. Uh, uh, I think it will be a backbreaking project, but then a completely independent school of thought. You know, independent of the left school or the right school of thought. I think you know that that that's where the you know answer lies for communities like us. You know, for this conundrum where like, you know, where we are fighting battles which are actually not ours between the left wing forces or the right wing forces. Their school 
of thought. I mean, it's always their school of thought. So, um, yeah, an autonomous and uh, independent school of thought is, and I'm not saying that we are not uh, like, you know, we, we uh, something which is completely devoid of the readings from the schools. I, I'm not even talking about that, but something uh, perhaps, uh, yeah maybe more uh, independent and uh, autonomous. Uh, uh, I think that's, I think that was what uh, even the Master Scholars ha League has been aiming at and uh, we hope uh, we can uh, uh, do that. Yeah, yeah. That, that's okay. a... Mm -hmm. yeah. Arkutong uh, Longkumar has... Arkutong, uh, uh, yeah, Arkutong Longkumar has, uh, has a yeah. study on the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this movement, Jeminaka and uh, under uh, Rani Gaidili and it's a very yeah. fascinating, I mean, very good uh, work. Yeah, recently actually he came Herika. out on this yeah, entire book on the uh, growth of Hindutva in Northeast also. And I yes, think his yes, doctoral yeah. project was on the Hiraka. Yeah. So, yeah. A movement so, and how it is being projected, you know. Mm. There so, are actually, uh, he's also mentioned, I think, not uh, uh, about uh, Sambudan Ponglo also in that, uh, uh, you know, on his yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah, so that's there as well. Anyway, mm. uh, uh, I think uh, we will be concluding today I, for the evening. It was indeed a very wonderful uh, discussion, and I think uh, uh, one of the longest discussions. Uh, I think uh, you know in the, the several talks that have been conducted by Dimasa Scholars League over the period of over this uh, you know period of time, uh, and uh, on behalf of Dimasa Scholars League, we I'd like to thank Dr. Suranjana Hasnu for giving her valuable time to us and on her insights, the insights that she has provided uh, on uh, Sambudan Ponglo, his life and the times of Sambudan Ponglo. We are uh, very much grateful to her, and of course. I'm very grateful to Dr. Santosh Hasnu for giving us his uh, valuable time. I mean, it was all on very short notice, but uh, uh, both of the speakers today made it possible for the Master Scholars League to have this enlightening discussion today. And I hope that this is obviously one of the very first discussions that the Master Scholars League has conducted on the life and legacy of Sambudan Ponglo, but it will definitely not be the last uh, discussions, uh, thought-provoking discussions on uh, uh, Veer Shenya Sambudan Ponglo. Thank you all so much for joining us here today and good evening and Jutai to all of you. Thank you. <laughs>